This is the project we're going to do today. I'm calling this one River's Way. I had previously done this scene using pan pastels on Bristol Smooth cardstock, and this time I've used mostly Copics with some water-based inks on Chrome Coat glossy cardstock. These are the stamps that were used. We used this little building on the water, the water ripples, these trees, and the large grass. These are all from the Nature Set 6. We used the big waterfall here from the Nature Set 2. And we used the little mill here from the Nature Set 16. And these two grass sets from the Nature Set 10. And I also used a stencil that was prepared by cutting some cardstock from the Lawn Fawn Dyes Puffy Cloud Borders. And I used the smallest one here to create the clouds. And so let's begin. Okay, I've already done this layout on some Bristol Smooth cardstock and coloring it with some pan pastels and I wasn't really happy with how that turned out and so I wanted to do it the way I usually do on chrome coat glossy cardstock. And so I've cut a six inch by four and a half inch piece of chrome coat and I am going to stamp all the major stamps in my stamping platform with my Misty Creative Corner. Okay, and next I'm going to stamp the filler grass. So I'll first stamp the one that has water on the bottom. And I've marked on the back here where the water line starts. So when I stamp, I will stamp at that water line. And then I'll use my other filler grass. Let's see, something else I see is I want this tree right here to continue down. And so I'm going to put this back in my stamping platform. And now I'll put the water ripples in. Okay, and I kind of overstamped over here, but uh, hopefully when we color it, it won't be quite so noticeable. Uh, but uh, I'm probably going to let this dry overnight and uh, start to color it tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to start by coloring the trees in with some Copic markers. I'm, these are alcohol markers. I'm going to use G20, G24, and G28. Okay, now I'm going to take a dry paper towel and just kind of buff this down. Okay, and where I got a little bit of green up into where the sky is going to be, I'm going to put some rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip and just kind of brush this down. 
Okay, and back to my G20. Okay, I want this hill over here to kind of continue down the back of the mountain, so I am going to just draw some dots here to kind of give the hint that this mountain is continuing. Okay, for the rocks, I'm going to use E55 and E57. Okay, I'm going to add a little more of the G20 up in this region and a little bit of the E55 to give a little bit of clue to an earth tone. Okay, for the cabin I'm going to use E11 and E15. Okay, and for this mill, I will use EO2 and EO4. Okay, and for the interior of the mill, I'm going to add some C5. Okay, and for the roofs, I'm going to use T4 and T1. Okay, so for parts of the water, I'm going to use B00 and B04. Okay, I'm going to use some G28 to add a little more color to these reflections of the trees in the water here. Okay, and I'll use some G24. Okay, I'm going to use a stencil now that I cut from this small die set from the Lawn Fawns Puffy Cloud Borders. And I'm going to use some Memento Bahama Blue to add some clouds to the sky. Okay, I'm going to clean off my brush by wiping it on a dry microfiber cloth. And then I am going to just go back and forth across the sky that I just did. Okay, now I'm going to use some Memento Summer Sky and I'm going to add some ink to the major portion of the water here. Okay, and now I'll use some Bahama Blue. Okay, I got some blue up here on the roof when I inked in the sky. So I've put some water on a Q-tip and I'm just kind of wetting it down just to kind of mute it out a bit. Then I'll take my T1 marker and just Try and color over that a bit. Okay, and I'm going to add some more Memento Bahama Blue. Okay, I'm going to take my smallest skinny brush 
and see about adding some of the Bahama Blue to the water here. Okay, and for the grassy area, I'm going to put on some new sprout and bamboo leaves, and I'll start with the new sprout. Okay, and for the bamboo leaves, I'm going to use my smaller brush that has kind of the roundish head. Okay, and now I'll use the mid-size flat brush. Okay, for the windows of the little building, I'm going to use my dark uh, yellow of my Zayar paint marker. And I will shake it up really well. Make sure it is primed. And then And then I'll dab it up with a paper towel. And this window also. And just dab it up. So you can see it right there. Okay, I'm going to use, add some Hero Arts white pigment ink. And I'm going to use a Fantastics applicator that I've cut off so that it gives me kind of a wedge. And I just will apply pigment ink where I want highlights. Okay, now I'll add some highlights to the rocks. Okay, now I'll use a Uniball White gel pen to add some highlights to the trees. Okay, now I'm going to take the large grass here and I will stamp with Memento. Okay, and now I am going to sign and date it. And I'm going to give this pigment ink a little bit of a chance to dry and then I'm going to spray this with a uh, acrylic coating to protect it. And uh, we'll be back. 
And I think I would like to add some wildflowers to this. So I'm going to use uh, Marvin Le Plume 2. This is number 55, Iris Purple. This is a water-based marker. And to add wildflowers, I'm just going to place random dots. Okay, the pigment ink is almost dry, and uh, I'm going to now go spray it with some Krylon UV resistant clear acrylic coating. And I'm since there's so much pigment ink on here, I'm going to put several very very light layers on. And when I'm finished, we'll be back. And here is the final scene after it's been sprayed with the clear acrylic coating. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.